All right, welcome back. Today, we're gonna be working on our engine again. Some of you guys who've been around for a while remember that we've had some overheating issues with Artemis when it starts getting warmer out. Some of that has been my fault working with the air suspension right in the back. I blew a fuse one time and the electric fan wasn't running. It's overheating bad. This is bad, I need a green light, this is bad. But moreover than that, we have a clutch fan on here that is supposed to be engaged when the temperature gets up to a certain temperature. And it hasn't been engaging until the engine gets way too hot. It's causing us to really worry. This is a very low mileage V8. It's a 454 cubic inch, 7.4 liter gas V8 engine. But it has 60,000 miles on it. And this is our future. If this RV doesn't run and we can't move, that creates a, a whole, whole bunch more problems. So it's, it's very important for us to keep this engine in, in, in tip top health. You guys will see the one that I pull out of here isn't gonna look much older than this. And this is how these things work. So fan bolts to this part of it right here. Actually it bolts to this part of it. This part bolts to the engine. Basically, this spring right here, once it starts getting hot, expands and there's two plates in there. And once those two plates connect, this starts spinning as one. Right now it's slipping. So you can see that this is turning separately. But once it heats up to about 180, 190 degrees, these two plates connect and then this spins at the same speed as this. So what that does is when the car is not running hot, this free spins so it doesn't take any power from the engine for that fan to be there. But then when it gets hot and it connects, that it takes that power from the engine to turn the fan, but only until it cools down. And then once that spring loosens a little bit, then this will disengage and it will stop using the power from the engine. So we were in here tightening the belt a couple weeks ago. I remember how well that did, cause you know, none of you watched that video and that's okay. <laughs> But here's the old fan clutch sitting right here. And well, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. So I'm gonna pull it out right now. I think there is four 13 millimeter bolts to hold the whole thing on. And I'll be able to pull the fan and the clutch out of there somehow. I'll get it around the hose or out of this fan shroud. Do you wanna go to the front for this? Towards the front? Up in the front. For more light? No, to access it better. Isn't it better accessed in the front? No, because you, you can't. Not at so, all. You see that radiator right in yeah. front of it? and the fan shroud that's all you can see from the front and this is this is all the access you have to get back here from the front is right here but i love that question you asked no it's a good question because there's a lot of people that will ask that so yeah like yeah well I, I mean some it does almost seem like there is a better way i'm actually looking not. at the front hood right now so yeah. if i opened it right there totally i'd have access to just this and then everything below that is taken up by the radiator I see. Got a 13 mil wrench and get busy. Bought this set at Lowe's because we needed a good RV tool set. So I bought this, which is a nice set. It was on sale. I think it's like 108 piece or something like that. 100, no, excuse me, 300 piece. Something oh yeah, like that. way it's more. A very nice set. And it was on sale. It was like a really good price. And I really don't mind Lowe's tools, a Cobalt brand, especially because they like anything. Anytime you can get a lifetime warranty on a tool. Tool. Anytime you can just bring it back and be like, I broke this, and I just give you a new one, that's what you want. Having a snap on tool, having a, a like a Matco, kind of like saying that you drive a Mercedes or a BMW, right? It's a, it, it's a status, it does the exact same thing this does. When people look at the kind of tools that I have and try and judge me, I, I kind of just laugh at them because those tools that I have have always made me a whole lot of money, and I've never been so pretentious that I care who makes it. As long as I can get a good warranty on a tool, I'm usually pretty happy. Anyway, off the soapbox, back to work. <laughs> Yep, I was right, 13 mil. This fan bolts to the front of your water pump and a lot of times the weight of this fan on the water pump will uh, cause the water pump to go bad prematurely. I know a lot of people that will actually delete the mechanical fan from their V8 and put uh, an electric one on it because one, you get more horsepower because you don't have the mechanical drag of the fan. Hush, hush. You don't have the mechanical drag of the fan and two, it adds life to your water pump. So that's a brand spanking new belt and I did not put that on. You can still see someone right before we did this, what bought this, replaced the belt and probably that fan clutch. But for whatever reason, that fan clutch just sucks. So we're taking the nuts off of these studs right here. Can you see? Yeah, there you go. So that plate right there is what's gotta come off the front of this water pump. Hey. Want to help us out? Subscribe to our channel. It's totally free and it would really bring us joy. Then click the bell notification so you know when we have a new video up. Thanks. 
Alright, so I got three out of the four bolts out. The problem I'm having now is that the, there's one bolt on the very bottom, because of course there is. It's really hard to get to, so I can't spin it over. I was trying to use one of the bolts to spin everything over, so I had better access to it, but it just loosened, it didn't turn. So I have a couple options. I can try and get a pry bar in there and move it, which is almost impossible. I can connect the battery and pull this wire right here, which delivers spark to the engine. And then I could use the key and the starter to turn everything over for me or I could just try and reach for it. I'm gonna go with option C. So if I can reach this. Oh man, how am I even? Ah. All right, all four of them got loose. So I didn't have to, I didn't have to bump the motor over. But if you are having trouble reaching it, or for whatever reason, it's like really tight. Also, I have run into a nut that is so tight that you can't, like you can't actually get the last one loose because it'll just start turning everything. So I'm glad it didn't do that. I don't know why I waited. I should have made this bolt first and not last. Always do the hardest thing first, guys. I didn't follow my own rules. Because this fan is loose. It's so loose in fact that I'm gonna put another bolt on the top so it's easier to get that bottom one out. Four. I chopped that bolt, but I should have left a, a bolt in the top a little tight to make the bottom easier to get at, because now it's just hand tight. Loose. I'm going to lose this one too. In such a precarious position. Years of practice have made me a master. You got found it? No, I didn't no, find it. I pulled that hard bottom one off okay. without letting it drop, so I didn't drop another one. I'm not two for four. I'm one for four. I'm okay with that. Yeah, this top one's a booger to get out too because now this fan's loose. What I wouldn't give to be able to get two hands in here. That's it. That's all holding on. How is that coming off? You keep turning. Yeah. Get it around. Yeah, that's a good question. How is it coming out? Hmm. Hmm it so one blade kind of comes out at a time I, I gotta get this blade on the other side of this shroud in order to do I that yeah, i might also need you to be a light person here for me let's see what i can do here there we go. that's sort of what you were talking about maybe where'd that wrench i had go probably one side or the other if i can separate it in here then i don't need to pull it all the way out okay i, I see that i okay. could 3d chess it go good everything's fine we're right here with you look over here i'm trying to find a good spot oh i don't want to cut into that hose i'm afraid that's sharp enough that's just what that will do i have to get it back on those studs and localize it to loosen those bolts Yeah, I know. That's what yes. I'm really worried about. That's a nice Ooh, that's pull. Too close. That's why I didn't put any kind of real pressure on that. Because once I realized what it was doing, I was like, nope. I'm not trying to saw through a hose to disconnect that. It's got to be a smarter way. That's the thing with this is there's such little room. You just, if you are going to tackle something like this on your own, which I'm sure a lot of people in this position are just willing to do stuff on their own, either because of the weight. There we go. Let's get two nuts back on here without dropping one. Without dropping one. Without dropping one. Problem is, this thing just turns. Hmm, I'm gonna have to find a pry bar. Something to shove in there to stop it from moving so I can exert some force on it. The whole idea was to get it out of there so I could hit it with an impact wrench, pull it out apart outside of the vehicle. So I gotta find something to hold this because while I'm turning this, you know, it's just gonna move. So I need to find something I can shove between those blades. It's not gonna move. All right, we are uh, a big fan of Archimedes here. If at first you don't succeed, A, get a bigger hammer, or B, get a bigger lever. Uh, nope. Good, good, good. First bolt, easy. I just shoved this bar through the alternator bracket and I'm letting it rest on one of those fans. So as this comes around, basically the fan can't turn that bar because it's getting caught on the alternator bracket. So now that I got one done. Oh, man, I'm just gonna scratch my own set of blades from that So I'm using the uh, compound wrench method to do this. Some of these are so tight that uh, it's hard to get enough leverage on here. What I'm using is a 
19 millimeter wrench on this 13 millimeter. I don't know if they've ever been stripped before. I don't know who else has been in here working on this. This wouldn't be so bad if I didn't have to levitate in here with all my abdominal muscles. I know, you're just like hovering, keeping yourself from falling into it is test. I gotta keep the right angle or I'm gonna strip gonna it. Lose it. Maybe. No. I got it, baby. I got it. The AC compressor on this thing would be so easy to replace and get new AC going. This is it. Oh, it's just right there. If I could find a junkyard air compressor this summer for like 40, 50, 60 bucks, I might just do that and refill it. And then while it's running, we'd have AC coming out of these vents. I guess if you're working on RVs, it pays to be in at least a little bit of shape. Ugh. That's the rotation that we wanted. You can see how much extra force you get by doubling up that wrench. And it's, uh, again, we're a big fan of working with in this house. Okay, fan is loose from the clutch. Now I have to just loosen the clutch from the engine. That's the only part I need. Ta-da! <laughs> this thing does not look that weathered. Like, look, you still see all this shine on the back. And mm -hmm. we bought this like a year and a half ago, so this yeah. isn't more than two years old. I feel like this was just recently done. Yeah, it looks all very similar, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. All right, let's get this one in here. Let's start reassembling. And now for my next trick. More leaning and hovering and and More self-supporting my weight. And contorting. I found the bolt, missing bolt. It was just in front of the radiator. We didn't get it on film because of course we didn't. I promise we didn't go to the hardware store. No, I'm just kidding. Oh no. No, we didn't do that. Oh, how do I do this? The fan is floppy in here and I don't want this clutch to fall off of the water pump. So what I did, I don't know if you can see, I put a nut right there to hold it in place. So now the clutch won't actually come off. It's loose on there, but it's not gonna come off. Now I can spin the clutch around and get the fan on without having to worry about the clutch falling off of the water pump and going into parts unknown or damaging the radiator. I wanna put the bolt in there and I'll have like a little micro mo movement or a twitch or something like that. And I'm not lined up anymore. Oh goodness. These threads are a little bit dirty, so getting this first bolt in is a big pain in the patookas. Got it though. Woo! It's still moving. Yeah. Well, yeah, because once you put the fan on it, then it's got weight. I think you just gotta ask it very politely to cooperate with you. And then be patient enough to wait until it does. It's starting and then it jumps the red. I'll get it if I can get it past that rough point. It's no worse than the other one was. I think it looks like it's in better shape. <laughs> you know? Okay. And it's, it's just hard to start it straight with that well, angle and everything else here. And I think the threads that are in that, in this Chinese $70, whatever, marker marker. Fan clutch? Yeah. Is that what it was? 70 bucks? Yeah, 70 bucks. Start it at top dead center too. So there's no gravity working against these. I did. Oh yeah. So we got four of these started. Now I just gotta get four of these tight and I got four more tight and then we're done. Eight bolts, that's it. It's just eight ridiculously hard bolts to get to. I always hate stuff that you can see very clearly but you can't touch. It's very easily to show you guys at home what we're working on but to actually get to it is to act in agility and it's like a calisthenic exercise, you know? You ever, you wanna know what it's like to work on an RV? Take out a, a one gallon bucket of water and hold it out in front of you for a half hour. You'll have an idea how my arms feel right now. These were invented before electric fans were really easy to make. This technology dates back quite a ways. I'm not sure where viewers know. If you know when cl fan clutches were invented, comment down below. Tell us, we'd be curious to know. I think it was sometime in the 30s or the 40s. So I got all of these four bolts done. It's a pain. I got this fan clutch from O'Reilly's and we'll put the link for the clutch in the comments. It was about 64 bucks. There was another option. It was like 140 to 180 bucks. It was like an AC Delco approved clutch or whatever. 
And I think the difference is, is that I'm hoping that the threads are just a little bit better. That's the one problem I did notice with these is getting all these four bolts started was, was a big pain in the butt. I'm hoping that now that we got this all in here, we don't have any more overheating problems and that we can drive places without having to run the rear bed heater on. I won't have to watch that temperature. It's such a hot. <laughs> Oh, tight. I thought you were going to lose that wrench again. <laughs> Me too. There's probably a torque setting for these. I'm just going with pretty darn tight. If you're doing this on your own, I would suggest consulting a manual. It wouldn't be easy to get a torque wrench in here, but I'm sure it's probably doable. And that's tight. Okay, that fan is not going anywhere. Good. If you're going to do a job like this, I would suggest putting at least two hours aside if you're going to do it by yourself. Um, another hand might be helpful in there, but you can see it's, it's really hard to get in there. Even for Audrey to get the camera in there was kind of a big pain in the butt. We're pretty much done here. I think I'll close the video out here. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe, like, comment on all of our videos. We really appreciate it. We're a growing channel. Uh, we're trying to get monetized and, uh, you know, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.